Hello everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. When studying any form of paganism or witchcraft, we all know how important it is to go to the source of the information. When you're talking about the gods, that's going to include historical sources, mythology, and folklore. So today I want to tell you five of my favorite stories about Bridget. I have one announcement though for anyone that doesn't listen to the podcast or who isn't subscribed to the podcast wherever you may listen to it. Um, I'm bringing the podcast back. The podcast is going to be coming back at the end of May and it's going to be a little different. Um, actually, it's going to be a lot different. It's still going to focus on witchcraft and paganism and everything in between those two topics, but it's going to be monthly instead of weekly, and it's going to be longer. I'm basically going to cover different topics on my podcast that would be more difficult to cover on YouTube as a visual platform. I'm still going to be cross-posting the audio from the podcast to the channel, but there won't be a video recording of it anymore. So check the link in the description below for that information. I have linked to the podcast and um, go ahead and listen to the announcement because I have a few other things that I'm announcing at the same time. So as I said at the beginning, it's extremely important when studying the gods or any other aspect of witchcraft that can be studied from either a historical perspective or even an academic one to go to the source of the information. And since I heavily work with and honor Bridget in my practice on a regular basis, I wanted to bring you five of her stories from folklore, mythology, and even some of her stories as a saint. So get comfortable. I'm going to try to make this video as visually appealing as possible um, because, yeah, it's YouTube. And all of the links for the sources for these stories will be in the description below. So get comfortable. I have my shawl that I made for myself in honor of Bridget. I'm going to wrap it around myself and tell you a couple of stories. I know I've said it before, but I want to mention it before we get into the stories that I have to share about Bridget. Bridget is a goddess, but she has also been granted sainthood with the Catholic Church, and a lot of people separate the two. They see Bridget's stories as a goddess as different than her stories as a saint. And I don't personally take that view. I see Bridget's stories from her goddesshood and her sainthood as belonging to the same being because that's how I view her. I view her as all-encompassing. Just because she went from goddess to saint doesn't mean that she just changed completely. So keep that in mind when you listen to these stories. If that bothers you, then some of these stories might not resonate with you. And make sure you watch all the way through because the last story that I have to share is one of the most controversial stories that I have found about Bridget and it actually caused a stir earlier this year. The first story that I want to tell you is called The Well at the Edge of Loch Lawn. There is a well at the edge of Loch Lawn that belongs to St. Bridget and this is in Ireland. On June 23rd every year, there would be many pilgrims who would travel to see this well and to pay their respects and partake in what it is that they did at the well. One year, though, the owner of the land that the well was built upon banned all travel to the well. He claimed that the pilgrims were damaging his crops, but no one at the time was really sure why he decided not to let anyone in. He kept it closed for about three months until one day the people of the town woke up to the owner of the land just completely changing his mind. He reversed the ban on traveling to the well and welcomed everyone to go to the well to pay their respects and ask for the healing of St. Bridget. For a long time, no one really knew 
why he changed his mind. Some people speculated that his cattle were dying. Others speculated that Bridget came to him directly and gave him a warning from heaven. Many years later, though, he told his neighbor what happened. The owner of the land said that he had woken up to all of his fencing being thrown into the lake. So obviously he was very upset and he didn't want people traveling on his land, even if they were going to the sacred well. And he had a mind to even drain the well at one point. So one night he went out with his spade with the intention of draining the well. But when he got to the well, he was surprised to find that there was a beautiful maiden coming out of the lake and the entirety of the area where the well was, was surrounded in candles and lit in candlelight. The beautiful maiden rose from the lake and she was wearing a white robe with a blue sash and adorned in jewels. And instead of walking, the owner of the land said that she glided like a sparrow. And when she moved, she went directly over the well. No doubt it was Bridget herself come to change the mind of the owner of the land. The second story that I want to share with you is from the Ka Matura, which I hope I'm saying that right. I practice it a couple of times, <laughs> um, but it is Irish for the Battle of Matura. And this story is not a happy one. This story tells of the invention of keening. During a battle between the Tuadadanan and the Fomorians, Ruadan, who is Bridget's son, was kind of caught between. He is of both peoples, Bridget being his mother and of the Tuadadanan, and Bress being his father of the Fomorians. So Ruadan went to the Fomorians and told them how the Tuadadanan kept bringing their mortally wounded back to life. And I recommend reading the whole story because it's really interesting in what they were doing. But basically it was a bunch of different steps and the smith crafter had a lot to do with it. Now I'm going to put the smith's name on the screen because I feel like I butcher it every time I say it and I probably do give new, give new. I think is how you say it. But the Fomorians told Ruadan that in order to hurt the Tuadadanan and win the battle, they needed to kill the smith. So Ruadan was tasked with killing Givnu and he went to Givnu and threw a spear at Givnu, who in turn pulled the spear out of his body and turned around and threw it back at Ruadan, striking him and killing him. And then Bridget came and keened for her son. At first she shrieked. In the end, she wept. Then for the first time, shrieking and weeping were heard in Ireland. Keening is that first sorrow that appears in Ireland in mythology and folklore. It is that heartbreaking cry from someone who has lost someone they care about deeply. And the first sorrow in Ireland was Bridget's. Did you know that Bridget has a connection with beer and ale? It's interesting because this connection followed her through to her sainthood. And there is actually a prayer or poem. I'm, this one was more difficult to find the original source for, but it's literally everywhere. And I'm going to put a picture up here of one of the prayers that was shared in my Discord group. But it is supposedly Bridget's vision of heaven. And it talks about a lake of beer. And everyone is just merry and happy and reveling in the lake of beer and just enjoying themselves. And there are a lot of stories in her folklore, um, even as a saint, where she turned bath water into beer or where she would just turn water into beer and give it to those who are thirsty. She has a very heavy connection to brewery itself. 
The fourth story that I want to share with you is about Bridget's cloak. And if you look for information on Bridget, uh, you will probably find a lot of websites saying that her cloak is magical and she used it for a specific task. And this is that task. As a saint, she went to the King of Leinster and told him that she needed some land for her charity work. And the King of Leinster was very stingy with his money and basically was really annoyed that Bridget was there asking him for land. He didn't want to give it to her and he just wanted her to go away. So in a sort of joking manner, Bridget told him to give her as much land as her cloak would cover. And in his annoyance, he just said, okay, fine, whatever, you know, you can have as much land as your cloak can cover. Just go away now. But little did he know that Bridget's cloak isn't a regular cloak. So the maidens that St. Bridget had with her, there were four of them, and they each grabbed a corner of her cloak and then took off running in all directions. And to the king's astonishment, Bridget's cloak just kept growing. And he watched this and finally he said, Oh, St. Bridget, what are you about? And she basically told him, My cloak is about punishing you for your stinginess to the poor. And they finally came to an agreement and Bridget got the land that she needed. And whenever the king of Leinster started to become too stingy with his money again and too greedy, all Bridget needed to do was remind him of the power of her cloak. Now, the last story that I have to share with you is by far one of the most controversial stories I have found about Bridget and the things that she has done. It was even recently a topic that I saw on Twitter several months ago, and it has to do with the first abortion in Ireland. This story comes directly from a hagiographer called Cogitosis, where he wrote about the life of St. Bridget and detailed some of her miracles. And this miracle is controversial because it details how essentially St. Bridget of the Catholic Church performed the first abortion in Ireland. According to Cogitosis, I hope I'm saying that name right. I'm probably not. But according to his writings of Bridget's miracles, a woman who recently took a vow of chastity came to Bridget because she had given in to the sins of the flesh. She was young and she just gave in to temptation and she ended up pregnant. Bridget, being who she is and understanding the lack of judgment of youth and a protector of mothers and children, decided that it was okay. In his writing, Cogitosis says that what had been conceived in the womb disappeared and Bridget restored the woman back to her health without childbirth or pain. I don't want to get into the semantics of that particular story because it can go one of two ways, but the way that it reads, Bridget made the pregnancy disappear. Through these kinds of stories, we see how the gods are connected to us and to the world around us. These stories, whether from deity or saint, shows Bridget's willingness to protect all people, the love she has for those closest to her, and her connections to healing wells, midwifery, sovereignty, and advocacy for those who might not be able to advocate for themselves. There are many more stories to be told and to be found. You just have to go look for them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these five stories about Bridget and her life as a goddess and her life as a saint. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, concerns, or anything like that, go ahead and leave them in the description below. Make sure you actually check the description below for the sources for all of these stories, as well as information on how to join me over in Discord. I have a Discord server that is small and it's slowly growing. I'd love to have you there. It is an all-inclusive space. It's supposed to be a safe space for like-minded people to gather together, share their thoughts, what they're learning, if they have any questions. We're all here to help each other out and help each other grow if that's what you want to do. So again, the links for all of that is in the description below and I will see you in my next video.